Now, we've been talking about the Pew Research Center survey showing that women are increasingly the breadwinners of U.S. households. But women in the U.S. House, as in Congress, now that's a different story. Women still make up only one fifth of the Senate and less than a fifth of the House. And the 113th Congress is, in fact, the, the record-breaking Congress for women. Look, one of the, the things that I think that's been most interesting for me, Reshma, is watching how the women of the 113th have, in fact, taken up issues that impact men and women, but particularly the sexual assault in the military. Uh, Elizabeth Warren and, and other women who have been right out there in front, Barbara Boxer and others, saying, we have to address this now. There are many men who have also been victimized by sexual assault, but it took women sitting there to get this finally moving forward. I think it goes back to what I'm saying. I think that many women that are in elected office or who are trying to seek elected office see it as their responsibility to bring these issues forward, mm -hmm. right? And it comes from a place, I think, of passion and interest. I mean, Senator Gillibrand has been out there, right, on yep. this issue as well. And you're seeing, you know, with both Tulsi Gabbard, Grace Meng, Grace Meng's been very vocal on issues on immigration, how they affect undocumented, mm -hmm. how they affect immigrant women. So I think that that's why we need more women in elected office because they are going to push these issues forward and raise these questions that, quite frankly, men haven't raised. So, so I'm willing, though, to make a claim for women in elected office, even if they didn't, right? That there is, that there was, that there is a demographic value in a democracy to saying that your, the body into which you are born is not in and of itself a disqualification for office. Even if I disagree, right? So even if I disagreed <laughs> with all of the women who were running, or if they didn't bring up specific issues, that it still would matter. Is, is, are we really just wanting feminists in office? Right. Or, or does or having all women, including the Michelle Bachmans of the world, in office matter? No, we nope. need more women. We need all sorts of women because we are a full spectrum. And so I don't want to just see raging feminists there. I want to see women there who actually may side with policies that I may not like because they are the voice of other female Americans. Females, period, need to be up there or else we're not going to have our voice really represented. And it's way too easy to take down both extremes. Mm -hmm. right. so we need a little and, bit more in the middle. And I mean, and you've seen that, you know, there are women in power on the right, too. I mean, you think mm -hmm. about Governor Nikki Haley, who yep. the way that they oh, yeah. tried to stop her from being elected was through a sex scandal, right? right? And sort of impugning her sort of, you know, was she a proper good, proper, you know, Republican conservative woman. And I do think it's important to have women on both sides of the aisle. Because as we saw with Megyn Kelly, mm -hmm. when it comes down to brass tacks, women are women. And they're going to defend themselves, defend their own honor. And I think it's important, but it's also important where the women are. If you or at least house, working women are working women. Because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sitting here thinking, I'm not sure I always buy that, but I do buy that That probably Megyn Kelly in part was, I mean, I know I take personal, I mean, you know, we're all mothers who work, that the idea that we are harming our children by right, working, right. like yeah. that goes to the well, gut of who we are. A happy person. mama but is a good mama. Right. And I will not be happy if I'm sitting at home. Yeah, well. That's it. <laughs> making a sandwich. <laughs> right. I would not be happy. But so it's okay that's part of it. Right? Yes, okay. And it's okay if some women are. Right. Right. The full well. spectrum yeah. of right. what a woman is. Mm -hmm. I right. just want the opportunity to do what makes me happy, but, and that makes me a better parent right. to my child. But you also have to have women in a position to make a difference. Because if you look at the difference mm -hmm. between the House and the Senate, when you talked about an elected office, yeah. the women in the House are there, but the women in the Senate have power because you have more women who the Democrats decided to put in leadership. And you have mm -hmm. women like Dianne Feinstein, who's yep. been able to be very forthright on issues like guns and on national security. You know, you have K Kirsten Gillibrand, who mm -hmm. led, as you said, you know, this fight about sexual assault in the military. Because because these women are on prominent committees and are very important. If you look on the House side, the most powerful woman in the House is Nancy Pelosi, yeah. who is the minority <laughs> leader who yeah. John Boehner can't pass legislation without her. Yeah. And when she was Speaker of the House, she there was more legislation passed in that Congress than in any Congress since the Congress that passed Medicare. Right. But then there's also the point, however, that, I mean, if we look, for example, at our Supreme Court, that doesn't require voters to kind of get on board, right? right. right. We've only had four women on the court in all of American history, and three of them are sitting on the court right now. When we look at cabinet level positions, only 45 ever in American history, 45 women ever in cabinet level positions. That doesn't require voters getting on board. That that requires the men who are currently in leadership getting on board to put women there. And and then even in, in countries where you have women as as prime ministers, often you or or other chief executives, they, they still end up filling their cabinets with men. Margaret Thatcher, oh. I believe, had only one female cabinet minister in, in the first cabinet she put together in, in the well, UK. She was Reagan in. <laughs> well, and also it was 1979. Right, exactly. And so I think, but uh, but I think you know the 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 low representation of women in Congress is a symptom of a broader 
broader problem of unrepresentativeness of Congress. It's not just that Congress is heavily they're male. Rich. Yeah. They're rich. They're people who went to elite schools. Mm -hmm. A very large percentage of them are lawyers. And it's important to have a diversity of experience so that people can relate to the needs of their constituents. There's also the problem that the economy is much better in Washington, D.C. than it is in the country as a whole. And so people get cloistered in this D.C.-centric view. I think it's part of the reason that they're not treating 7.5% unemployment as a crisis, because the economy looks quite good for people in D.C., especially for affluent people in D.C. So I think one thing we need to bring that diversity of experience is, is more women in positions of power. But there are also other measures that are harder to find on a demographic table that are ways in which... Can I add to that, too? Yes. I mean, it's important to note that I think one-third of women who run say that someone discouraged them from running, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And that, you know, there used to be a time with, I think, with female voters who are like, well, I'm just not going to vote for the women. Mm -hmm. You should vote for the women. And I think that's changing. And yeah. I see that in my race for public advocate. Women are, you know, my donor base, my volunteer base, and we will be led to victory because women voted for us. Yeah, and in fact, speaking of all the data we've been uh, spouting, <laughs> data show that when, that when women are running in open seat races, they have just as much likelihood of winning right. as men. So the problem of not being able to win is an incumbency right. advantage problem, right? It started out with all men, and so the men are the incumbents, so it becomes harder to right. win those seats. Thank you so much for joining us. Both